And what is up, everyone? It's me, Han from Above, joined with my cohort in crime, Brandon, for another versus. This oh, yeah. is episode two, sir. Episode two. I am once again playing the same colors, but you know what? That's okay, because that's pretty much all I do in real life. That's all you really do, I mean, <laughs> honestly. So, tonight we have uh, Jund Monsters, the uh, list that B uh, BBD and CVM have basically been running with because they said we're not going to change. Yeah, um, why change? Yeah, why change? change. So I, we, I want to see how good it really is. It's really um, good. Well, I understand that, but I want to see how good it really is. Um, and we're going to play a deck that's kind of come around for, what, about a month ago? Yeah, it's it's been kind of popular. Like, a lot of people saw it. Jeff Hoogland played it. They're like, whoa, must play, must play. I wouldn't really call it Flavor of the Month, though. It's just been a kind of popular deck. A lot of people like these kind of strategies. Me included, like, Junk is sweet. Junk is very sweet. I mean, it gets to play Abrupt Decay and stuff like that. So, uh, it's going to be against Junk mid-range. Um, a little updated list, so we'll go into that deck tech. Um, just wanted to give a brief intro, guys. This is brought to you by CardHoarder.com. Uh, they are an amazing site, and definitely, guys, check them out for your online card needs. Again, this uh, Versus video is brought to you by CardHoarder.com, and you can give them a follow at CardHoarder as well. So, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm going to start out with my wonderful deck, um, and we're going to start out with two copies of Banishing Light. I'm actually going to get rid of my mixer here. Uh, two copies of Banishing Light. Uh, yeah, can we say O-Ring? Yeah, sure. I love it. Um, <laughs> three copies of Brumaz, um, because, well, we need ki the king and his uh, dirty old dad if we're going to fight against a Jun deck, so... Or, yeah, just any deck. In any deck, yeah. The king <laughs> is good. Um, two Archangel of Thune, because why not? She's pretty beastly when she gets out there, and if she's not removed uh, quickly. Combos with Obsidat. Oh, and she combos with Corsair, and she combos with a lot of things. Yeah. So. Um, she doesn't really combo with Obsidat. <laughs> yes, she does. Oh, but he, he gets all the counters taken off him. It doesn't matter. She gets counters. This, no, no, this is going double troll. It's actually still good. Yeah. Uh, then we have Elizabeth, a copy, one copy of Elizabeth. Um, so four copies of Heroes Downfall. Because premium removal. Who doesn't love to kill a creature or planeswalker? Um, Underworld Connections, probably one of the best draw cards besides Rev right now. Yeah, it's probably like number two in standard. Yeah. Yep. Maybe number three, like right after Corsair. Yeah. Sure. I know that they go really well together. <laughs> they do. Uh, two copies of Scoos. So we have two copies of Mr. Scavenging Ooze. Sure. Um, four copies of Sylvan Carotid. And yes, that is the promo copy, because I like shiny. Also the one I'm using. Yep. Uh, three copies of Corsair. Two copies of Blood Baron, because pro white, pro, pro black, lifelink goes with uh, Archangel. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It's pretty bad in this matchup, though. Yeah, he'll probably be coming out, but we'll <laughs> go with it. Um, a co one copy of Dirty Old Dead. Three copies of Abrupt Decay. I'd say that's pretty good. That's going to hit most of your stuff. Yeah. Um, four copies of Advent, because it's a great little surprise. Yeah, I got blown up by one earlier today. It was a little unfortunate. Just attacked into four open mana. Needless to say, I will not be doing that today, so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> um, and then two copies of a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Cause... Still, like, okay. So I get a Johnny. Like, you want to play him, cool. Like, people, people really like him, and they want to test him out. But seriously, he's a one of. He's a decent one of, but he's not, like, better than Elspeth. So I don't get it. Well, we'll find I just, out. I like the Elspeth. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 
Alright, and then we got two forest, uh, three godless shrines, one mana confluence just to even out that mana, uh, four overgrown tombs, a swamp, uh, three temple gardens, uh, four temple of melodies, four temple of plenties, and three temples of silence. So we're definitely going for the uh, scry effect. Because it's a mid-range deck. I'm not worried about... That's a know, lot. Yeah, I'm not worried about beating you up too quickly. I just mean it's a little ends that come into play tap. Like, if you want yeah. to use a removal spell. Like, um, I just... I don't know if that's the right number. We'll just see, like, that's part of the reason we're doing these videos. Yeah. Let's just see if 11 temples in a mid-range deck is too many. I think it is, but maybe I'm wrong. And maybe. I should just be doing that. Uh, so, sideboard-wise, we have a deicide, because, uh... Yeah. It's... I think it's one of the best removals, two drop removals for anything enchanted right now, enchantment based. Yeah. And if you happen to run into a god, you can yank all the gods out. I don't think you do anymore, like. I honestly, I can tell you, um, I have yet to hit a god with this thing. Yeah. I mean, it's also just like, today I didn't see a single god playing and I played probably seven or eight matches with this deck, the Jun deck here, so. and I just didn't see a single god, so I don't know. That All part right. of it's not really amazing, no. the fact that it kills enchantments at instant speed is sweet. Yeah, uh, one copy of Thoughtseize. That's uh, it? Really? Yeah, that's it. Uh, two Bio Blights, uh, two Lifebane Zombies, I could guarantee that's probably going to be coming in against you. Yeah, they have some some pretty, pretty good uh, targets here. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I bored most of them out. <laughs> yeah, I'd hope so. Under One other copy of Underworld Connections. Uh, three of Sin Collector, which definitely won't be coming in against you. Um, dirty old, Another copy of Dirty Old Dead. A copy of Veraska, because uh, she's pretty good. Yeah. Um, a Fair copy enough. of Putrefy. Yes, that is the full art version of Putrefy. Um, and two copies of Gagari Charm, because... Yeah. Destroying enchantments and giving neg counters to things are good. So let's jump to you, Brandon, and uh, what sure. do you have in store for us today, sir? Uh, so like I said, it's Gen Monsters. This list is just completely stock for the most part. It's yep. what CVM was playing on his states that he won, so clearly the desk is very good. Yep. Uh, the highlights are like, like, obviously you're playing the four Mystics, the four Carriedids, uh, here he's got three scavenging uses. You see a couple of play four. This one's only going for three. Uh, a couple of removal spells. He runs five main board and a couple more on the sideboard. So it's not too removal heavy, but it certainly can kill some stuff. Uh, the two big card advantage engines of the deck, I would call them, are Domri and Corsair Crucifix. And they these pair cards, so well. Yeah, these two cards in conjunction are just insane. Like, oh, there's land on top. Okay, play it. Oh, no, creature. Draw it. That's your, a lot of the time just drawing three cards a turn. Yep. It's pretty good. Uh, I'd say it's pretty alright. Yeah, and then we have Xenagos as our other Planeswalker. Uh, usually you're just using the zero ability to make a 2 2. But there have been times where I'm like, oh wow, this board's kind of stalled. Hey, Stormbird Dragon. Okay, so I'll play Stormbird Dragon, I'll plus Xenagos, I'll Monstrous Hit, I'll attack, and, you know, do like 15 damage in one turn. So, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty alright. Or, not 15, sorry, 10. <laughs> that would be, maybe if I had two Stormbirds, anyway. So, Xenagos pretty good, but, you know. Even if you're just sitting there and he makes two twos all day long, it's still pretty decent. Uh, the the monsters in the list are these ones here. So we've got four Polychronos, four Stormbolt Dragon. Those are the ones you generally want to play. And then you've also got three Gorklan Rampagers. He's cut one of them. Um, I think that's probably fine. This card is really good, and uh, it, it has some matchup where it's insane. So there's a freaking Mosquito in here. But it also has some matchup where it's just dead. And you never want to use it, and it's just like a four, 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 which is not good. So, it's it's got it's got its place. Uh, I don't think it's actually this matchup. I'll probably be boarding the mouse, but yeah, it's a it's a really good card, and it's good to have main board. You certainly get a lot of free wins with this guy. Like when your your opponent's just tapped out, and you're like, all right, well, attack, block, sure, rampager. I went. That has happened quite a few times today, so <laughs> pretty okay with that guy. Um, other than that, the only basics he's playing are the forests. Just four of forests. Everything else is a non-basic. Two of which are muta vaults. He's got uh, eleven shocklands and six scrylands. So 
Not too many lands that come into play tapped, and most of the ones that do, you can play untapped, which is really nice. He's got six lands that have to be played untapped, or tapped, so... It's a, it's a pretty decent number for a relatively aggressive deck like and this. And you, you got two Muta Vaults, in case you gotta get the beats on. Yeah, I, I don't know about the Muta Vaults. I think I might just play one. I, I, I like more consistent mana, though. That's really, like, important to me. Yeah. And there's been, like, two games today where the Muta Vault really punished me, and I had a mulligan a hand or something, so... That was a little unfortunate, um... They are quite nice, like, to have Mutavolts in your deck is really sweet. Always nice to have them there, or it's available to you. Um, so that's the main deck. Here in the sideboard, we just have some removal spells, Doom Blades, Museum Mortars, a couple of Putrefies, and I also have a full art Putrefy in here for some reason. <laughs> I don't know how you got that. Yeah, I don't know how I got that either. Um, <laughs> so there's the four extra removal spells, Golgar Charms as well, probably coming in. The, um, well, no, they don't come in here. Um, quite good. You know, all the modes on it are very good, so... Giving everything minus one, minus one is relevant, like mono-red matchups. Uh, regenerating all your guys is going to be sweet, versus anything that has removal, or, you know, Screen Verdict. Pretty big deal right there. And just destroying enchantments, you can get, like, Corsair Crufix, or, you know... Uh, I got a Herald Torment earlier with it today, which is pretty sweet. Ooh, <laughs> so that, that had to feel good. Yeah, he's like, attack, alright, but four blocks, kill the Herald Torment, block your guy. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. <laughs> um... Past that, we have Nelly's Disciple, which I feel is mainly just for aggro matchups. Uh, like, it's going to yeah. be good for some, the burn deck. Oh, I think good. that's why it's there, is because burn deck yeah. has made its appearance so big, you know. It's pretty popular right now. Yeah. So it's, it's good versus the burn deck, and as well, good versus the burn deck, we have Bow of Nelia. This also has a bit of uh, game versus, you know, like mid range matchups, but I don't think it's worth bringing in over some of the cards that are in here. Uh, like Vraska, who is one of my favorite Planeswalkers, even though she's a 5-drop, she's still really good, she deals with opposing Planeswalkers, which is what's really nice about her. Or, you know, you can kill Underworld Connections, which is also really good, so it's not just a removal spell, it's a kill target that. It's like having Vindicate in your deck, for 5 mana, but you can use it twice sometimes. <laughs> yeah, That's no. what this card is. <laughs> also, it's a win condition if you need it to be. Yeah. Past that, we have 3 Miscutter Hydras for, like, Mono blue, which isn't actually that much of a deck anymore. Or control. Yeah, or blue white. I actually think you should probably go down to two, and like bring in, I don't know, maybe something like a Thurgo Bari Charm even would probably be better. But I'm not sure. That's just me. I'm not as high on Miskatar Hydra anymore. I think it's still good, but I don't know if it deserves a three of. And then we have got two Rakdos's return, just super good versus control or mid range or whatever. Any non aggro list is going to be sweet versus. You got it. All right, so I already created the game. So the format, um, Brennan, I'm going to change it a little bit um, on the fly. We're just going to do two best of threes. Yeah. And uh, so we'll sideboard each game like we normally would after okay. first game. And then go from there. Sure. And if it comes down to a tie, then I guess we'll have to do a third best of three. Shh, if it comes to that. <laughs> go to Constructed Open, bud. Okay, uh... Q's constructed open constructed open play and then you're gonna go to tournament practice oh I gotta be right sure 